Rob, if you can pull up the clip with Alejandro Mayorkas, the fact that we have a, you know, Dan, who former Secret Service, I, I really want to see how he reacts to this. Go, go for it and play this clip. Uh, no disrespect, Secretary. Chad Wolf, your predecessor, was among those saying, we're almost three and a half years into a crisis, and only now are they starting to take these executive actions. These are actions that we have been pleading with the administration to take for two and a half to three years. What do you, what do you say to that? I don't. Uh, that's not accurate. That's what I what I say. We we implemented the asylum officer rule through regulation. We implemented the circumvention of lawful pathways uh, rule through regulation. Uh, we have built additional facilities, um, deployed uh, enforcement and removal operations uh, officers. Uh, this year, we have removed or returned more than 720,000 people who do not qualify for relief under the law more than any full fiscal year since 2011. We've been enforcing the law from day one, despite the political rhetoric. <laughs> how, do you, how do you react to that, Dan? I mean, this guy's so full of shit. It's like, <laughs> I'm, I mean, I know Pinocchio was like a fairy tale. Yeah. But you're wondering why his nose, you're like, oh my God. Again, this is, you know, gaslighting, right? Lie, lie often, lie confidently and isolate people from the truth. Mm -hmm. The reason this would have worked with Cronkite 30, 40 years ago is no one had video cameras at the border and people, oh no, no, the border, if you didn't live in a border community, you wouldn't know, right? Again, information's democratized. Bro, I can just go to X and put border and watch for the Fox drone live. So he's so full of shit. But the thing about it that's so disingenuous is everything he says has some nugget of truth, but he's giving you the opposite end of it. He goes, we built facilities. Well, the Cavuto should have stopped him. For what? Oh, to process people to bring into the country. So that's what the facility, what you, they're not detention, they're processing facilities. And then when he says, we've deployed people to the border, yes, to assist people in getting in, not to keep them out. Yep. He's, what he does is he's, he's, he's a clever liar. And I hate clever liars because they're disingenuous little shits. He's a clever liar. He says something with a nugget of truth and makes it appear like he's doing the opposite. And by the way, The 212F, the INA, Immigration and Nationality Act, the president right now, look it up. Anyone look it up, 212F, please, if you think I'm making this up. The president has the authority right now to stop any class of, sit of immigrants for any reason coming into the country for as long as he wants. You could, there it is, right there, thank you, 212F. It's right there, folks. You think I'm lying, go... So if him telling you, like, they need congressional authority to do these things... It's right there on the screen. You think I, it's on my attorney USA. You think I made that up? Let me yeah. just read it so the audience who's on, on, on uh, Spotify can see it. So the first part of Section 212F codifies the president of the United States broad authority to suspend the entry of any aliens or of any class of aliens if the president determines that such <laughs> Entry would be determined uh, detrimental to the interests of the United States by presidential by proclamation. Proclamation. He doesn't yeah. have to do anything. He could just do it because he has the presidential Trump authority. Did it. Yeah. How do you I'm think glad Trump you brought did it? that up. I'm so glad you brought that up because it was like less than 45 days ago. Biden looked into the cameras and said they got to pass the law. If that law was, fit, you know, what I'm talking about I the know quote. Exactly what you're talking about. That's I exactly it. And then you're bringing to it. This is where the president just lied to our faces as citizen. Hey, we need that law. If that law was passed, I would do it right now. Pass that law. He has the ability. He has the control. They just won't do it. And we're being duped okay, and we're so, being used. So I got a question for you, Rob. Can you pull up the other number of the amount of illegal immigrants coming through the data that you had? Okay, here we go. 2015, 16, 17, all the way down to now. So dark green encounters, apprehensions, uh, uh, orange expulsions, light orange uh, returns, removals is yellow-ish, right? So you see 2015, say 600,000. Then 2016, say 700,000. 2017, probably half a million. 2018, 700,000. 2019, say 1.1, 1.2 million. 2020 drops to around 650. Then 2021 goes to 2 million. 2022, say 2.7 million. 2023, 3.2 million. Wow. And counting, right? And counting. So. All these numbers, these are we had more in one year than the last previous potentially six years, five years combined, right? Encounters and apprehension, what I'm specifically talking about. Okay, great. Trump gets elected. He hires 
you know, Tom Homan. Okay, he comes in. And they want to clean it up. How are you going to get rid of 10 million illegal immigrants that came here? How do you no, do that? That's the problem. See, this was very tactical. You're, you're, you're right. Uh, for as much as I would love to look into the camera in your audience and say, Trump's going to fix, he can fix the border relatively quickly, just 212F and get the construction going. If we can get it passed through Congress, you need money. No one's going to build it for free. Uh, but the problem is, it, it's it's almost impossible. It's just a matter of simple logistics. I mean, you're talking about because they're here, once you're on U.S. soil, the Constitution applies. It, it, it's sad that, that, that the not said we have a Constitution, but that they were allowed to get in. That's the portion of it that's troublesome. But the Democrats were very tactical, folks. They're not stupid. They understand that it doesn't matter if these illegals vote or not. It, it does. I mean, it's terrible. Obviously, if they do, they broke the law. All that matters is they're here. Because they're counted in the census. And the census apportions House of Representatives members, which doesn't only determine the breakdown of Congress, but also determines the presidency. How the hell's that? Because the Electoral College is based on your number of House of Representatives members plus senators. So if you import 10 million people, which is the population significantly more than a number of U.S. states, what the Democrats just effectively did is create probably two to three small size liberal states and gave them votes in the Electoral College to get to 270. It doesn't matter. Why do you think, go back and look at this, you think I'm messing with you, when Trump wanted the citizenship question, why do you think the left went nuclear meltdown, DEFCON 42 million? Because they knew if the apportionment on the census didn't include their 10 million new new citizens or whatever they want to yep. call them in the euphemisms game, they knew they would never win a presidential election again. Yep. So that's why they went absolutely crazy. And John Roberts uh, and his court, they screwed us over. That would have changed electoral dynamics in the United States forever. And that's what Trump has to focus on right away is the citizenship. Court. And they were already upset because was it five or seven electoral votes moved north to south? Uh, between Florida and Texas and California, New York losses, you're in the ballpark. Yeah. Right. So basically... Would have been more if they right. wouldn't have screwed it up. So basically, you know, a, let's pick a blue state up north. Basically, a Vermont and a half went to the went south in terms of the Electoral College. And that's why they were flipping out. And so, you know, look, election manipulation through redlining and everything for congressional districts is as old as the country itself. And these folks want to, why do you think they were being bused to certain areas? Why do you think they were flipping out when Texas was saying, you know what? Tell you what, get on the bus, you're going to New York. Because that it, that's not where they wanted them. And then Mayor Eric Adams gets religion and it's like, I can't care for him and winter's going to come here and they're going to freeze to death. So now he's taking school gymnasiums and stuff and, and impacting it that way. But you're exactly right. This was a programmatic, mathematical invasion designed to deploy and then <clears throat> later break after one census and reapportionment. I, I can actually prove to you what I'm telling you is true. That, that this is why, by the way, I'm agreeing with you, out. by the way. No, I know. Like when you bring up, no, I, I, I totally get it. But when you bring up the idea of what the Democrats call replacement theory, right? If you bring this up, they freak out. And what I do on my show is I say, really? Because I'm just going to play a video cut of you talking about demographic destiny and replacing but you, Democrats. It's not me. It's you. Hmm. There's an article in the New York Times. Look it up. Michelle Goldberg. Look this up. New York Times. It's called We Can Replace Them. <laughs> Look it up right now. You think I'm believe it. <laughs> yeah, this is they're like, erase it. That's that's thank you. I did. That's it's the real. freaking New York Times. Holy I, shit. Wait, I thought we were the re it's, they talk about it all the time. They don't want you to notice. Wow. Why don't they want you to notice? Because they realize what, what Tom just said. The electoral math for them with sane U.S. said they'll never win a national election again without illegal immigration. This is what I was making the point, though. There was a senator. I, I may have been Ted Cruz, but I'm not sure. But this is about 10 years ago, maybe a little less. He put a poison pill. It was genius. in one of these bills that said, and he did it to be tactical. I'm not sure if it was Cruz, but... They said, OK, what we'll do is we'll do some kind of semi amnesty, but they can't vote. The left one. I thought this was about like taking care of people. So you'll let them in. But if they don't vote for you, kick them the hell out. Wow. It was 
it was genius because all the Democrats said no. All they care about is votes. They don't give a damn about these people. <laughs> that article is legit. That. That, they, they'll tell that. you, mention replacement theory. They'll call you a racist on Twitter. And they and go, I'm, I'm, I'm just reading the headline from the New York Times, yeah. bro. Oh. With Stacey Adams. And by the way, so, they call it, you know, the border. I call it a turnstile. Because think about that. We've been saying this forever. The left or just the regular voters, they don't believe. They're still like, no, this is America. We have to let everybody in. We know. Think about it. It's not only for votes. It's for Women, sex trafficking, it's for all that, all the terrorists. No. If you think about it, Dan, th that border situation, they're going to use this for whatever the hell they want. They're giving all these people cell phones. And by the way, the whole lie of it's just Trump said the Mexicans, it's it's beyond Mexicans. You know, my wife's an immigrant, right, the, from Colombia. So I love when they come after me and go, man, you really hate immigrants. I go, that's ah, yeah, I married one. How'd I get past that? Yeah, so weird. weird. Yeah. Uh, my parents, yeah. his my parents. My kids are, are Colombian and yeah. Italian. It's We're like, all, so weird. Yeah, we all come from that. But it's like to not see what's happening. And then now. By you the, must get a kick out of that when they tell you. Uh, you guys must hate immigrants, you capitalist entrepreneur. You're like. You he really? is one. He's yeah, not I'm from kind here. Kind of one of them too. Yeah, right? yeah. I wasn't How'd that from here. Out? <laughs> yeah. They're so dumb. They're, it is yeah. like it's such a shallow, stupid argument. Yep. There, there's a really valuable component to value-added immigration in any country. The Japanese are finding that out the hard way right yeah, now. Weird. But yeah, this is this racist nonsense. It's just them projecting onto you that they're using minority groups as election tools, and they see them only as a power. So, so is, is it going to work then? Is this is this tactic for this election? Is that tactic going to work? The, the the illegals with the electoral college with the people. Man, let me tell you something. This election scares me. That's why in the beginning when we talked uh, about the red wave stuff, I said, I, you talk about that on my show, I like cancel you right away. I'm like, I don't even want to hear it. I, it could, man. And, and I do worry about the cheating. Cheating's real. You talk about all the old smack you want. I mean, you it, you guys are economics guys, right? You can't prove a counterfactual. It's like the golden rule of economics, right? What would a tax cut done if you didn't? I don't know. It didn't happen. So what <laughs> yeah. are we going to... I can't tell exactly you. Exactly right. So you but can't box me in on something that never took place. You can't box me in that never happened. So when, when, when people say like, oh, voter fraud doesn't exist and it's not systemic and there's 10 million people here who could, in theory, if they were smart enough, get a ballot... You can't prove to me it didn't happen if you didn't detect it. That's it's like a joke of an argument. Like voter fraud isn't systemic. How do you know? Because I know. Take my word for it. Do you benefit from voter fraud? I do. So you have a vested interest in saying what you just said with no evidence to back it up. I do. So you're a moron. I should disregard. No, no, I'm a smart guy. You're an idiot. <laughs> Will it work? It could. I'm optimistic about this election. I think the black vote and the minority vote are really going to help us a lot. Um, I think Trump's made some major headway, and I think that's going to be his lasting gift to the Republican Party, a demographic shift we've needed for years. But, uh, man, I'm still nervous. I mean, 10 million people is a lot of people. Did man. you see the CNN reporters that completely lost their mind when it was 6% minorities? When it was, that was this past week. And then 22% right nine, now. Nine, well, to 9, 9, 9 to 22. 9 to 22. 9% previous. Now it was 22%. And even more with the younger, younger generation. Yep. We talked but about the election. About I got two minutes left, and I want to go to one more thing, Tom. I want to show it. How big of a, r a role does this play with Nikki Haley? Okay, with Nikki Haley saying this, if you can play this clip. So just a couple months ago, she's trashing Trump, right? She's saying what she's saying about everybody, and she says this. Go ahead, Rob. As a voter, I put my priorities on a president who's going to have the backs of our allies and hold our enemies to account, who would secure the border, no more excuses. A president who would support capitalism and freedom. A president who understands we need less debt, not more debt. Trump has not been perfect on these policies. I have made that clear many, many times. But Biden has been a catastrophe. So I will be voting for Trump. Having said that, I stand by what I said in my suspension speech. Trump would be smart to reach out to the millions of people who voted for me and continue to support me and not assume that they're just going to be with him. And I genuinely hope he does that. What does that mean, though? What does that mean, though? What's, it, what's she saying? She needs a job, doesn't she? Yeah, that's because that's how what I job think. Baby is she reach out for? to my people, to my the voters, millions who voted for me. So my please people. reach out to me and offer me a job is what 
how I interpret that. How do you interpret it? Man, that's so you and I, man, are like mind. I swear that's the first thing that came to my mind. Like, it's incredible. The country's in this perilous spot with the oatmeal god in the White House. Mm -hmm. And the speech is about him courting you as if you won. Yeah. Why? The, one, they're not your supporters. They're supporters of a specific bland, brand of Republican politics. This isn't like, uh, it's not a UFC fight. Like, oh, I'm supporting Conor McGregor. This is about the country. I think she waited too long. I think this was terrible politics. I think the right thing to do was to come out right away and said, I lost. He was obviously a better candidate. I think she's burned herself in Republican politics forever. Uh, I really do. I, I, I hope that's not the case. I like to see a big, broad bench. It's good for us. There's no addition by subtraction in politics. He, we, I hope we get those votes, and I hope he does talk to those voters. But this, like, I'm a conduit to those people, come to me. Yeah. It, it would be like me saying on, on my show, like, uh, you know, hey, hey, listen, uh, Trump, you need to get on my show so I can tell my— <laughs> I should be telling my support to save the country. Yep. Vote for Trump. Not come to me like, you need to kiss my ass. I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't digging that shit. It's an establishment all. comment that comes from establishment politician that see voter blocks as owned. A hundred percent. They're like a commodity people trade. Like, oh, look, my block here for your block there. No, no, no. This should be about statesmen. I mean, I get that's all flowery and now everybody hates politics and politicians suck. But that's I don't know, man, that's weak. That well, whole thing is weak. Thank you. Rob, can you do me a favor, Rob? So uh, uh, May 31st next week, Friday night, lights, Dave Smith against Chris Cuomo. Holy moly. This event will be from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The VIP sold out. I think we got a few of the second tier. General, there's a couple left as well. If you're wanting to come, some interesting guests are coming on because they want to see this live period. This is going to be, there's going to be some fireworks, but at the same time, the fact that they're talking, it's going to be exciting. I think even Dave yesterday with Rogan, they were talking about this thing coming up on a recent podcast Dave did with Chris. And Chris recently interviewed, uh, who is it? The CDC, uh, uh, Vinny, who's the person that uh, Chris had on that we played the clip? So even Chris is going deeper into it to expose some of the challenges from the COVID community, and that's gone viral. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen there. For some of you guys that haven't yet, Rob, if you can go back to the QR code for people that want to get registered, go to the QR code to get your tickets. Next Friday night, all of us are going to be there, May 31st. And at the same time, you can go to 5990live.com for the people that are listening on Spotify and uh, Apple, 5990live.com. Get your ticket. We'll see you there. Next Friday, May 31st, 6 tonight. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.